So this is going to be the topic I'm talking about now is called modifiers. So let me bring up a notepad for a minute so I can put this up in front of you. I want to make sure everybody understands what I'm talking about is modifiers to a change. So you're going to start with one piece of geometry. Such as a primitive. And that could be, for example, the arms or the head or the eye or whatever. And then you're going to add to the modifier stack. And you could take multiple weeks to go over this, but I want you to see the effect of a modifier on the geometry. So I'm going to use the sample from a student, and we're going to we're going to go through that. I'll move the camera so my eyes are more on it. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. Hopefully, you can see my screen. If you need to, to interrupt me, please use your microphone because my eyes are on this screen, and I'm not going to see chat over here. That's just kind of how that works. I wish I could move chat to the other side of the screen, but. It's not how my conferencing app works. All right. Um, Chris, I hope it's okay with you. I'm going to use your example. And what I'm going to do now is with a piece of geometry highlighted, that's the first thing. All right. So it's an existing piece of geometry. That's a primitive. Now I'm going to add to the modifier stack. So the modifier is done on a separate panel over here to the right. It's this one I'm highlighting right there. It's called the modify panel right there. So it's next to the create panel. So next, next, nerfed. Next to the create is a circle, is the modify, which, oh, sorry, creates a plus sign now. They changed it in this version. The modify, which to me, it always looked like a rainbow. It's a box around a curve, and that's actually a very good example of what you can do with a modifier. Because if you look at this stick in effect, what I want to do is I want to make it look more like a stick. So somebody tell me in public chat or your microphone, how could I change this so it looks more like a snow person's arm and less like a solid log? What could I do? You could, you could change, change the size of it, or like um, shrinking it and making it look thinner. Okay, so and here's the thing: is it's right now it's a uniform size. What happens to a branch between its origin and its terminal point? What is what would be a word for making that? What happens there? What do we call that? If I was going to take a piece of wood and I was going to whittle away at it, make it more like a pencil. It's thicker on one end and it's thinner on the other. So we can modify a solid by tapering down to the end. So I'm going to use a modifier called taper. So where it says modifier list, I'm going to click here and I'm going to start typing the word taper. Sorry. T -A. So you got found taper. I click on taper, it exposes the properties. So let me type these in notes because Chris can't hear me. Look at the um, options. Exposed. Change settings or properties. Now, if if we were going to talk in detail right now about objects and classes and instances, and this is we're going to set a value here is what we're going to do. So I can see the radius here, and I can change the radius by lowering it down or up. I got a certain number of Oh, wait, I didn't. I'm still looking at my cylinder. I need to add the word taper. T A P E R, taper. There we go. Now that I have the taper added, now I can actually change the properties. See the word amount here? I'm going to click with my mouse. I'm going to drag it down, and you'll notice that his arm has tapered. 
Now you can change it on X, Y, or Z, and it's going to have radically different effects. Watch this. X, Y, Z. Now I see that there is two of these. Now what I have learned is that these two have got some type of a connection between this arm and this arm. There's some association. When I change one of them, the other one changes. That's called an instance, and it's one of the ways you can make a copy. So if I want to make them exactly the same, I'm going to rotate this so that it fits better in that position. Now, I didn't create this scene, so I'm just discovering this as I go through it. I'm going to switch to the Move tool, and I'm going to move the arm back in there. So what I've done is I've modified the geometry so that it actually is more appropriate for my my desired uses and i'm just taking a minute now to check it from a couple different angles and make sure it lines up and go from the front there we go so our snowman is saying touchdown just about and change this into the default shading to turn the grid off so there I've applied a taper modifier. Now, are branches always straight and just tapered down, or is there anything else? How did I get to the taper step? Okay, let me show you. I'm going to click where, the, where it says, there we go. So click where it says modifier list. Let me see if I can bring up my controls from. There we go. Mouse focus. Turn that on. It's not bringing it in here, but it's modifier list right over here. I'll move my head over there. So, right there, modifier list. So if I tap down here. And then I, then I start to type the name. So you can scroll and search, but if you know the name, you can start to type it. Okay. So in addition to tapering down our branches, let me do this. I'm going to ask a question, a yes or no. is perfectly straight. Yes. They can be. By the way, I'm not counting spelling today, obviously. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just trying to communicate if you get it. So here's the deal is a branch could be like a pencil that you're going to stick into a snow person, or it could have a taper, but a lot of times they have a curve to it. So I'm going to add a second modifier and it's called bend. So I'm going to come over here again, to the modifier list. I'm going to click and I'm going to type in the word I gotta make sure I gotta make sure I've got it selected first. Can you see that? Now, I'm not in the process of animating this, but it does bring to mind that you could animate things. Sir, you're still on the whiteboard. Sorry. I think that's perfect. That's All exactly right. what I needed to do. So now I've added the bend modifier, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the angle here. 
and I'm not, I, I can animate with this, but I don't need to. But by changing the value of the bend, I can do some really funky things, right? The bend and the taper. Now I can get back into taper if I want to, and I could taper it even more. So it's really pointy. I can get into my bend and I can adjust that as I see fit. I can even go into the cylinder and change its properties. So if I decided that the base is too high, I can make it smaller. I can make the height longer. I can add some more segments to it. So there's not a lot of modeling involved here in this process that I'm going through. But what I am doing is just changing some settings. So that, that makes a slightly different version of a snow person than what we had before. Now I want to show you something else that's very important. Watch the save as and note the plus key and how the file name changes. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the word file. I'm going to go to save as. And you'll notice that there's a little plus key right here. See the plus key? It's important that you note it. So let me come over here. The little plus key. I'm going to click on that. And what it did is you'll notice that the file name now has got an 01 above it right there. See how it's got 01? So now I've got a, an 01 version of it. The next time, if I click on the plus key, I'll get an 02 version. That gives me a backup. Now, this is not an, an operation that requires a fallback position, but we might make a change in a more complicated model where we want a backup. Or, and today's a windy day, you might think you're going to lose power, and therefore it'd be nice to do a backup every now and then. So what questions do you have? Well... Hayden, you want to share your screen? I'd like to see what's going on. Uh, you know what? You don't have to share your screen. I can look from here. That's the beauty of this. Hmm, where are we at? There we are. Okay, go to the cylinder for a minute, if you could, please. And see where you've got height segments of 5? Make that 15. There we go. And turn smooth off. Okay, so now I'll go back to taper and bend and see if you see a difference there. I'm looking to see, okay, there is... There's one important button here I want to point out to you, and I don't know if you can see my screen or not, but <coughs> there is something on your screen that's that's blue right here. Click on that little button there so that it's not blue and see what that does. Okay, now try changing your settings. A little bit more of a difference. Now what you're doing here is you're you're curving you're curving yours. Um, up on the far end. If you make that a negative value, you'll make it smaller on the other end. So you can play with positive and negative values. Definitely seen some differences now.
So Hayden, are you are you doing better with this? You feeling like it's working better? Not exactly. Okay. Let me see if I can come in here and try something then. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the create panel on yours if I can. Make sure you got high quality. Turbo mode's fine. Let's see if I can. No, I think when you're in there, I can't take over. What I was going to do is start with another cylinder and just play with a simple cylinder. Great. And you can just make it on the base there. Yep. Cool. And then go ahead and add, um, add, make sure you've got some height, good height thickness is 15. Go ahead and add a bend and a taper on that. See if you can show us bend and taper on that one. Play with the bend if you could. When you click on the taper, good. So yeah, click on, click on the amount for taper and see if you can see the changes down below in the, where the properties are over. There you go. Yep, and then play with X, Y, and Z and see which one you like. Now, bend, bend did not get, you didn't hit enter on bend, so that one got deleted. So you can go back in there and change to bend. It seems like it's working. It's just a matter of like which end you're using for your origin on the cylinder, I think, that's making it change. It's okay to play with it. It's okay that it's not working exactly as you want. Ah, how do we put our name in it? I'll show you that in a minute. And the other thing that I want you to do is I want you to be able to make your snowballs look more like snowballs. All right, I'm going to come off of Hayden's screen for a minute here. Because what I want to do is I want to go into uh, a presentation I've got here. So by the way, guys, when you're connected here, you can get to the game programming drive. That's your I drive. And if you look under art, 3D, and I put this in the chat, and then under design challenge examples, I've got something called in the meadow, we can build a snowman. So here's a PowerPoint I've got to walk us through this process. Probably do it this way. F5 from here. Switch these displays. There we go. So here's what we started with yesterday. We did spheres of three different sizes. Now I gave you an advantage yesterday. I showed you how to align them a little bit better. Because what I used to have students do, and I think it makes it a little more confusing, is to learn how to orient yourself and arrange them in a 3D shape so that you've got moving objects so they align and you check your work from different viewports. Still a good habit to get into is to practice lining your work up so that it works out as such. So now you're going to com complete a more complete scene, and I want to walk you through something to focus on in particular. Let's see. I'm going to click on this link here and open up this Vimeo scene. Now, I'm going to warn you that this visual that he did with the rendering is not necessarily something required, but it does look cool. Um, He's setting up his 3ds Max units and whatnot. That'll be okay. Now, what I want to show you is he's got a sphere, and before he goes any further, he's going to add a modifier to it. The modifier is called noise. So look over, look over here, and you'll notice he's got a set a noise modifier. Down here in the parameters, we're going to play with these parameters to make it look like it's bumpy. Okay, so. Now we're gonna we're gonna play with these settings, X, Y, and Z. Five, five, and five. Scale of thirteen. So let's work with those. Five, 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 and a scale of thirteen. Let's go into one of our scenes. 
we're going to modify going to modify this using a noise. All right. So follow along, please. Select a sphere. Add a noise modifier. Use the settings from the video. Which were um, five, five and five and 12. Believe. So let's try those settings. I'm not sure I'm, I'm absolutely right there on my memory. I haven't looked at this thing in about a year. So he, yeah, we'll just play with our settings. Now, before he gets to that point, and this might be a, a factor for you, make sure that you've got your sphere itself has got. 32 segments. So let me stop that there and I'll show you what I mean by 32 segments. Now he's showing you the uh, the polygons here, which is the display option. I'm going to show that here as well because I want to change this so I can see my, uh, my, my wireframe here. And I want to make sure that I've got 32 on there. So I do have 32 segments. That's perfect. So with this highlighted, I'm going to come in the modifier list and I'm going to add noise. When I add noise, I need to change these to be, for example, 5, 5, 5 in a scale of 12. And I've got a snowman effect where the ball's very imperfect, like when kids roll it across the snow, because they don't end up being perfectly smooth. And so today I'm going to have you add some modifiers to make your snowman scene look a little bit more realistic. I'd like you to add noise to the spheres, play with the settings to your happiness, add some modifiers to the branches or arms. If you don't have arms, just add a couple cylinders. And we'll have applied the process of putting modifiers onto primitives. So go ahead and apply noise on your three spheres. I'm going to repeat the process. How are we doing? Are we able to add noise to our modifiers? Any comments? Hopefully I'm still connected to you guys. I don't see my, here it is, big blue button. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. You can, you can use whatever settings you want. It's your scene. But I want you to be comfortable adding modifiers. I'm going to add one more modifier on my arm here because I want you to see it. It's called twist. It's going to add a bend in it. So to do that, I'm going to go in my cylinder and I'm going to turn off smooth first. And what I want to do on, on my arm here is I'm going to add something called twist. And as I twist it, See, I get some different effects here. So I've got a bend in a twist in a taper.
They look a little bit too much like tusks to me. So what I'm going to do is turn off the uh, turn off taper for a minute, turn off bend for a minute, turn off twist for a minute, and I can decide if I like it with or without by using the little eyeball here. All right, so I want to take a look at what's going on in the lab. I want to see how many people are doing, how people are doing on adding these modifiers. I see a number of them have got noise on them. Um, Luis, how we doing? Do you want to have you been able to figure out how to add noise to it yet? So, Luis, you just want to click on one of these snowballs, and then I'll walk you through it. So, click on any one of the three. And off in the right where it says modifier list over here, so, sorry, wrong hand, over here, click right where it says modifier list and put something called noise. So, N, look, look under noise. Good. And then under X, Y, and Z, I want you to add, put in five, five, and five in those three places, please. Oh, actually, a whole five. Not a point five, but a five. So, Luis, I want you to actually, I'm going to stop, I'm going to pause my demo for a minute because I'm not going to add any value here. Uh, where's my other recording thing? Do, 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 do. Where'd the other one go? I think it's with this one. 